Welcome, kids, to our weekly kids Bible study. How many of y'all have brothers? If you have a brother, put your hands on top of your head, and if you don't, put your hands on your knees. I've got a brother, so my hands are going to be up on my head. If you've got a sister, stand on one foot, and if you don't, I want you to hop up and down. I don't have any sisters. I've only got brothers. How many of y'all have pets? Give me a thumbs up if you've got a pet or a thumbs down if you don't. How many of y'all have dogs or cats or birds or a pet rock? I used to have a pet rock when I was little, and so it's fun to have pet rocks, so keep those thumbs up for pet rocks. How many of y'all have a big family? If you've got a big family, put your finger on your nose. If you've got a small family, just like you and your parents, and you don't have any brothers or sisters or anybody, touch your toes. I've got me and Miss Amanda and Reuben and Olivia, so I think that's a kind of a big enough family. Some of you all got really big families. But God created us for relationships. The point of our lesson today is that God created people to live in families. God made people special. Last week we talked about how God created everything. When we got to man and woman, Adam and Eve, God created them in his image. He created us special. He didn't just create us special by creating us in his image. That means that we are created for relationship with each other and with him. And so that brings us to our, our Bible verse. Our Bible verse is in the book of Psalms. Psalm 139 verse 14 says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. God created you and your family. He created us special and he created us to have a relationship with him and with each other. And because that, we are created in his image. We are fearfully and wonderfully made and we praise God for his special creation. Let's pray, and then after we pray, we're going to check in with our Mooseberry kids and see how they're doing. God, thank you for the special way that you've made people. Thank you for our families and other adults who love and care for us. Thank you for sending Jesus so people can have a relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's been an eventful summer so far. Everyone is still recovering from our last adventure. We played a get out game where we had to solve puzzles and answer riddles to escape. And it wasn't stressful at all when the game was hijacked by Lannis's twin brother, Tannis. <laughs> I always knew it was him. He was apparently getting us back after we foiled his plan to cheat at a fundraising competition last winter. And I would have gotten away with it too, if it wasn't for my meddling brother. Lannis is taking it especially hard. Who can do something so terrible without feeling any guilt or remorse? I've been stress eating my chewy sugar beans. It's not that hard, really. In fact, I'm making plans of my own to punish everyone for it. One evil mastermind at a time, Stephanie. I've made a decision. I'm going to legally not be Tannis' brother anymore. I've got the paperwork. I'm very, very, very gifted. I can figure it out. That sounds amazing. Linus has a nothing but drag me down anyway. I'm just fine not being brothers anymore. Great, fine, perfect, outstanding, stellar, splendiferinos, sauce, sauce. Enough, this isn't helping anything. I think you two are going about this the wrong way. Family members should be able to work out differences regardless of what the differences are. And the only sure way to resolve your issues is by taking them to God. He can give the guidance and the wisdom that you need. He's been helping people since the beginning of the world. I guess I could keep being Tannis' brother. God knows best. I suppose since Linus and I are the same size that you can't have to have a backup wardrobe. That's the nicest thing he's ever said. Wow, that's the nicest thing your brother. Ahem. <clears throat> Is anyone interested in hearing about my evil plan? All right. Lannis and Tannis have a relationship because they're brothers, and they have sometimes good times and sometimes bad times. 
The weird thing is because they're twins, when they look at each other, it's like they're looking in a mirror. How many of y'all have ever looked in a mirror before? We all have, right? We look in a mirror almost every morning when we're brushing our teeth and when we're fixing our hair. I have to use it every day when I brush my hair because I've got to make sure it's just right. Mirrors are great, but there's one problem with a mirror. Mirrors only show you what's on the outside. They don't show you what's on the inside. They don't show you the love and the kindness that God has put within you. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 2. And we're going to talk about the special way that God made people. So turning your Bibles, Genesis chapter 2, we're going to read verse 7. And it says, Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. See, God created all of creation, and it was in a garden that we call the Garden of Eden that Adam and Eve lived. So when God created Adam, he put him in the garden, and he asked him to rule over everything. He said to work the ground and grow fruits and vegetables and to look after all of the animals. So take care of the baby koalas and the kangaroos and make sure that they have everything that they need. And in the middle of the garden, he put two trees. He put the tree of life and he put the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And there was one rule that God gave Adam. And it's, we find it in the Bible And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. See, God made Adam special. He made him in his own image. And he gave them authority over all of creation. And then eventually, as Adam was going, God said, this is not right. God, the, the Adam is missing something. It is not good for him to be alone. So God brought all of the animals to cross Adam. And Adam began to name all of them. So he named the itty bitty ant. He named the little bitty caterpillar that squirmed across. He named the squirrels that were jumping from tree to tree. He named the kangaroos that had big pouches and that hopped across. Everything was brought before Adam, and Adam named everything. But as each animal went before Adam, God said that none of them were the good helper that Adam needed. And so we go, keep going in our Bible story. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to come over the man, and he slept. God took one of his ribs and closed the flesh at that place. Then the Lord God made the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. And then Adam, when he saw the woman, he saw Eve, he said, at last, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. I will call her woman because she was taken from man. Adam finally had that good helper that was going to help take care of all of the other animals and take care of all of the fruits and the vegetables and help be able to till the gardens and look after everything that God had created. That was the first family that God made. God made people different because he made us in his image. He made us not in his image like with hair color and eye color and some of us have glasses and some of us don't and some of us are tall and some of us are short. That's not what it means to be made in God's image. Made in God's image means that we are made for relationships. We are made to love and to worship and to forgive each other just like Lannis had to forgive Tannis. And because of Jesus' death and resurrection, people can have a relationship with God It's not that just we we have relationships with each other, but God made us to have a relationship with him. Adam and Eve are going to mess up and they're going to sin, and it's going to cause some problems with that relationship between Adam Adam and Eve and God. But God, like we said last week, had a plan from the beginning. Before he created even the light and the dark, he knew that he was going to send Jesus to the earth to die on the cross so that we can have that relationship with God that there would be nothing separating us. All we have to do is accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. If you need to have that relationship, talk to your parents. 
give me a call. I would love to talk to you and your family about what it means to have that relationship with God so that we can all be as God created us. How will you spend time this week with God in that relationship? We talk about this often. We can pray and spend time talking to him. We can read our Bibles and know his word and what his commandments are for us and how we should live our lives. We can sing songs and worship about how great and marvelous God is. There's other things that we can do. If you like to draw, you can draw a picture that reminds you about God's awesome power. If you like to write stories, when I was little, I loved to write stories. And I would write stories about how God loved me and took care of me. And how he saved me and he was saving other people as well. I'd create short stories that were a lot of fun for people to read. But it brought me and other people closer to God. That's one way that I would spend time with God, thinking about him and how his love for me is greater than anything else. So make sure you take time this week to find what you're good at and what you're passionate and what you like to do and use it to spend time with God. Let's pray and we're going to check in with some missionaries. God, thank you for your creation and thank you for creating people in your image. Please help each of us understand the plan you have for our lives. Thank you for sending Jesus so people can have a relationship with you that lasts forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Why was I born into a reached people group? I was given every opportunity to hear the gospel. All of the unreached people groups that are still unreached are unreached partly because they're in places that are hard to get to. We fly to the capital of Senegal, and then we get on another plane to fly to a city in the southern part of Senegal, where we spend the night. The next day, we take about an hour drive to a river, and we get on a boat. It's about an hour down the river, wade through a little bit of water to get to dry land, and then we have about a mile hike into the village. Once we finally got here, it was just like relief. We're finally here. We can finally relax and tell stories from God's Word and do what we came to do. I knew in my head that there were people in the world who did, had never heard of Jesus, but I had never experienced that face to face. The spiritual warfare is sometimes so real that you can cut it with a knife. And we've had teams that have been here, they hear the drums beating in the background of the people that are doing this idol worship and the fetishes, and they are just worshiping false gods. Some unique things about the women, um, they know they can put all their worry and fear in Jesus, but they don't, they just feel like they're too old, they don't feel like they can, and that's a really hard thing to listen to them say, it's too late, it's too late, and you just... It's not. But this is a storytelling culture, and so people love to listen to stories. So when I say, can I tell you a story from God's Word, no one has said no. Everyone wants to hear stories, and so they listen. And We've seen such a movement of God among the village of Aflac and seen over 120 people accept Christ, over 40 people be baptized, and, and just the Word of God is spreading. When we embraced the Izumat people, we knew it was going to be a long-term commitment. We really wanted to adopt this people group. We wanted them to be the ones that we were going to take the responsibility for. And in reality, our church has become the missionary to the Izumat people. Part of the beauty of coming back to the same place over and over again is you really get to see God work over time. And you get invested in a people group and in what God is doing there. And so your prayers become more active. Your, your going becomes more important. You're taking a trip because you're trying to impact the eternity of the people that you're going to see. And we need to keep coming until everybody has heard because people are dying every day. I feel like if, I, if God's telling me to go and I don't go, then who is going to? How are they going to hear about Jesus? God's plan all along has been to use the church to bring others into the kingdom. So we must go. I wouldn't want to be standing in front of God and He said, so why don't you take that opportunity that I gave you? Did 
you know that there are people all over the world that have never heard about Jesus? Just like these people that the missionaries were going to tell about them, they knew that they needed to hear about Jesus. So they began to tell stories, and people like hearing stories. So the missionaries began to just tell them story after story from the Bible. Missionaries travel all over the world because there's people in Africa, in Asia, in South America, in Europe, and there's even people here in North America who have never heard about Jesus. There's people here in this town, they may have heard about Jesus and they may have some idea about him, but they don't know him as their Lord and their Savior. They don't know how awesome and powerful God is. They don't know about how Jesus died on the cross because he loves them. He wants that relationship with them. And so God calls some missionaries to go across the world, to go to other cultures and to other countries to talk to people about him. But he calls us as well to tell our neighbors and our friends and the people down the road from us about how he loves them too. We don't have to be missionaries that go around the world. We can be missionaries right here living our normal lives. And that's what Jesus has commanded us to do. So let's pray for our missionaries and let's pray for people all over the world. God, thank you that we can come to church, read our Bibles and worship you. We pray for the many people in the world who have never heard your name. We pray that you would send missionaries to reach these people and tell them the good news about your salvation plan for people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Kids, God made you special. He made you in his image. And that means that he wants a relationship with you and he wants you to have a relationship with other people. Take time this week to build on that relationship with God. And until next week, love y'all. Bye.